There's been quite a buzz about Jason, one of the main leads in the highly anticipated Grand Theft Auto 6. People are spinning theories left, right, and center, suggesting he might be an undercover cop, an agent, an ex-cop, or even someone with a military background. It's been the talk of the town ever since the first official trailer dropped. Now, I've gotta warn you, what we're about to discuss might just spoil a bit of the GTA 6 storyline for you. But hey, if you've been keeping tabs on the GTA 6 grapevine, chances are you've already heard murmurs about these theories. Now, I gotta stress, folks, that as exciting as these speculations are, they're just that. Speculations. Nothing set in stone. But here's the deal. There are some interesting things in Jason's outfit, from certain glimpses in the trailers, and Rockstar's promotional stuff, that sort of fuel these speculations. They're like breadcrumbs teasing us about Jason's potential undercover identity. So today, I'm here to unravel these clues, and take you through the evidence we've got so far. We'll start with the very first trailer of Grand Theft Auto 6. You know, the one that set the internet on fire? We'll dissect it bit by bit, and get into the nitty gritty of this theory that's got the GTA 6 community all hyped up. And it's not just about the trailers, folks. Oh no, there's a whole treasure trove of articles out there, discussing findings made by fans, diving into details, and connecting dots. We're gonna sift through all that too. And hey, while we're at it, let's not forget about the actors. There's been some chatter about who might be stepping into the shoes of Jason in this game. So we'll toss that into the mix as well. There's plenty to unravel, and we're here to explore every nook and cranny of this speculation, piece by piece. So grab your favorite snack, get comfy, cause we're about to embark on a journey through the GTA 6 speculations, theories, and rumors about Jason. Let's start off by jumping into this interesting Reddit post. I've seen some speculation that Jason is an undercover cop makes sense since we see first-person gameplay of a police raid. I'm guessing he falls in love with Lucia, and his storm between his duty and his love could be not true, but it seems like it would be a good twist in something Rockstar would do. Okay, let's take a deeper dive into this scene where we encounter these four police officers. They're pretty unmistakably cops with that distinct police badge on their body armor. It's crucial to note the small details here, especially regarding their attire, as it might hold some key information. Now, among this squad of officers, there's one guy who stands out from the rest. He's chilling on the far right, sporting a casual white tank top, while the others are all suited up in body armor, their caps turned backward. This difference suggests a hierarchy within the group, making us wonder if this dude's perhaps a higher up or holds a different position within the force. The intriguing part, though, is the context of this scene. It feels like a pivotal moment, almost as if these officers are significant characters in the narrative. But let's pump the brakes a bit. It's all speculation at this point. We can't be certain of their importance or their roles in the storyline just yet. Now, let's loop this back to Jason, the main focus of our attention. There's a striking connection here, the cop on the far right and the one in the middle, both sporting these distinct olive green cargo pants. These pants seem to be a part of their uniform, something that catches the eye. But here's the twist. The same style of cargo pants is seen on Jason in the official Grand Theft Auto 6 artwork released by Rockstar. Coincidence? Maybe, but it feels like too much of a match to ignore. What's up with these pants? Is it a fashion trend among the police force in the GTA 6 universe? Or could it be hinting at a deeper connection between these officers and our protagonist, Jason? The plot thickens, and we're left to ponder the significance of these subtle visual cues. Is there a backstory linking these officers to Jason? Or is it merely a design choice by the creators to establish a visual pattern? We're left with questions, my friends. Questions that make us itch to uncover more about this intriguing storyline. So, buckle up as we continue this investigation, piecing together clues and theories, aiming to decipher the enigmatic links between these officers and our mysterious main character, Jason. There's a whole world of possibilities waiting to be explored within the realm of Grand Theft Auto 6. Let's dive into this article by Exputer that further supports this rumor. GTA 6 fans have been busy digging into the lore of both protagonists since the trailer dropped. It appears that users may already have found notable details about Jason. A slew of forums and posts have popped up with speculations with evidence that complies with prior findings. A post by the Redditor, Jack underscore Torrance 80, on the GTA 6 subreddit, solidifies the past rumors that clarified that Jason would start the game as a cop. The pants worn by the protagonist in the GTA 6 poster are a part of the official uniform of Miami-Dade Police. The green cargo pants are the same color used by the Miami-Dade Police SWAT team. Additionally, the inclusion of body cam footage in the trailer may also imply his past background as a cop. 
It is speculated that he was dismissed from the service during the events of the game, having to continue his life as a petty thief. In the side-by-side -side comparison, you'll notice something intriguing. Those pants on the right in the image are an exact match to the ones worn by those police officers in the trailer clip. The detailing with those black bands and the gun holsters, it's all there. But here's where it gets interesting. Jason, in the official artwork, doesn't seem to have any of those gun holsters. It's as if he decided to part ways with that gear when he left the police force, holding onto only those distinctive pants. Now, about that white tank top he's sporting in the artwork, it bears a striking resemblance to the one worn by the cop, positioned on the far right in that clip. It's these little connections that make you wonder if there's more to it than meets the eye. Could it be a deliberate choice by the creators to hint at Jason's past, subtly linking him to the law enforcement world? Or is it just a coincidence? In the comments of the Reddit post, a user says, he is probably a dismissed cop or soldier, got too desperate and started to do petty crimes. Lucia brings him the local connections and scores, and he uses his former police training skills in weaponry and vehicles, a dismissed corrupt cop or soldier, a freshly out of jail ex-prisoner. Victor Vance and Tommy Versetti. And there could be more parallels between these two pairs of characters if you think about it. Vic was being betrayed again and again in his storyline. When he finally decided to quit, his brother pushed him to enter another deal with Tommy, which eventually killed him. Tommy, on the other hand, is a more cunning and ambitious person. He promised Rosenberg to leave him a piece of his Vice City Empire, but later abandoned him and left him exiled in Las Venturas. These observations really bring up some compelling comparisons, especially when looking at Tommy Vercetti and Victor Vance from previous GTA installments. There's a chance we might see echoes of similar themes or storylines reflected in GTA 6, which lines up nicely with what Rockstar teased in the trailer. Let's zero in on Jason's haircut. It's clean cut and short, a style often associated with law enforcement or military personnel. That detail might not be just a coincidence. It could be a deliberate choice by the creators to hint at Jason's past as an ex-cop or someone with a military background. It adds an extra layer of depth to his character, don't you think? I'm genuinely interested in hearing your take on this theory. There is a lot of evidence supporting this theory, and it might be a major deal as we might be working with the police possibly in GTA 6, the latest iteration of the GTA 6 mapping endeavor. The developers have expanded and refined the GTA 6 map significantly, making it the most comprehensive fan-made project to date. It incorporates all available data from leaks and the initial official trailer. We'll explore the recent updates to the map and conduct a fascinating comparison between the current GTA 6 map and those of previous GTA games. Additionally, we'll examine a fan-created satellite view of the GTA 6 map, along with the inclusion of Tommy Versetti's mansion spotted in the trailer. All of these elements will be discussed in detail throughout this video. Let's kick things off with the GTA 6 mapping project. Changes have been implemented across all regions of the map. To ensure we cover everything comprehensively, we'll begin our tour from the northwest and work our way down, addressing each modification along the journey. Firstly, the map's dimensions have been expanded from 16,000 by 16,000 to 18,000 by 18,000 to accommodate the newly added land mass. Each square on the map measures 500 x 500 meters. Based on the latest estimations, the map will be larger than before, requiring more space to accommodate all its features. Currently, the northern portion of the map remains unknown, which contributes to its perceived size. Hence, the map extends beyond what's visible on the screen. According to rumors, the GTA 6 map is speculated to encompass three major cities. Presently, we're aware of two. Vice City, the largest city, and Port Gorn, which has undergone further expansion in the latest map update. The third location, Yorktown, is anticipated to be modeled after Tampa. Rumors suggest that it could be the third major city featured on the map. However, at present, there's limited information available about it in the leaks. The only indication we have is a sign displaying New York Tune within Port Gorn. Regarding Port Gorn, details are scarce apart from its name and general location. It's positioned north of Fort Killorn and east of Yorktown. Moving on, we encounter Hank Hill, one of the notable elevations in the game. Despite Florida's predominantly flat terrain, Rockstar has incorporated hills sporadically to diversify the landscape. Adjacent to Hank Hill are the Domed Hills, another series of elevated areas. Notably, the border of a river is highlighted in orange, indicating speculative terrain. Nonetheless, it appears to be situated in the vicinity of Red Hill, a small town position near Lake Leonida. The largest body of water, Lake Leonida, sits approximately at the map's midpoint, drawing parallels to Lake Okeechobee in real life. 
To the north of Lake Leonida lies Fairyland Forest, a wooded area neighboring Fairyland, a playful nod to Disney World. To the east of Lake Leonida, you'll find Ambrosia and Laurel, two additional small towns along with North Beaches. Heading south from Yorktown, we reach Port Gorn, which has undergone expansion westward. The buildings and roads depicted in black and gray correspond to those visible in leaked footage and the trailer. Roads highlighted in red, along with orange borders, remain speculative. However, the port area shows two speculative buildings and a portion of the border that's confirmed. The Bay Area has seen overall enlargement, including modifications to the speculative islands near Port Gorn. Additionally, a newly added section featuring small islands and a confirmed border indicates further expansion. With these developments, Port Gorn's size may rival that of Vice City. It might not match Vice City's scale, but it could rival, if not surpass, GTA V's Los Santos, which is remarkable, considering it's our second city on the map. Additionally, the confirmed borders of Port Goro have been adjusted based on new evidence. The remaining areas in Port Goro largely remain unchanged. We still have Han Waffles Diner, surrounded by its buildings and structures, along with Port Gorn Motel, Gorn Bluff, the Pawn Shop, Port Gorn Raceway, Port Gorn Airfield, and the United State Prison. Belleville and Iconfina remain situated near Vice City. Now, focusing on Vice City itself, much of it retains its layout from the previous map update. We observed the increasing density of the map, particularly with the stockyard and crossdown area now filled in, along with the hotels in the Vice Beach area. The proximity of the buildings to one another is quite striking. Additionally, the buildings on Pelican Harbor Island remain consistent with the previous update. However, there's been a recent discovery. I'd appreciate your thoughts on this matter in the comments below, as it could potentially be significant if confirmed. According to this viewer, they claim to have identified Tommy Versetti's mansion in the trailer. They're referring to this specific mansion situated on the Middle Island, directly behind the enormous yacht. It bears a striking resemblance to his iconic abode, raising the possibility that it could indeed be the one. However, it's challenging to make a definitive judgment, since it's nighttime in the footage. It could simply resemble it, but it's difficult to confirm. Nevertheless, it would be fantastic if it indeed makes a return in the game. The recent update brought significant changes to Vice City, particularly with the Vice City port. This is where the scene featuring the bolt shot from the trailer takes place. Now, we have a clearer understanding of its entire border, with some buildings identified. There are two speculative buildings, along with some confirmed ones. The bridges have been updated, and there have been adjustments to the speculated Ryaway. Furthermore, the FLP Solar Amphitheater has been relocated northward based on new evidence. The Vice City International Airport Metro Station has also undergone updates, aligning with new information from leaks. Notably, the airport now appears more complete, with an additional hangar. These encompass all the changes made to Vice City. Now let's shift our focus to the Grass Rivers, as they've also received updates. The speculative landmass along the west coast has been adjusted to accommodate the map expansion. Notably, the Lake SLW Waterway now connects to the Grass Rivers, providing insight into the potential appearance of this swampy region on the map. A scene from the trailer showcased the Airbolt, a vehicle likely used for traversing these areas. Hamlet remains in its original position, serving as a parody of Homestead. It's interesting to note the location of the Shaka Shed, situated in the middle of the Grass Rivers, reminiscent of the shacks seen in Lemoyne in Red Dead Redemption 2. This suggests that this area may draw inspiration from its counterpart. Furthermore, I anticipate hunting to be quite intense in this region, given the presence of alligators, snakes, and lizards. The diverse wildlife, particularly at night, is bound to create a thrilling atmosphere. Additionally, changes have been made to the Gator Keys and the surrounding islands, as observed in the trailer. More specifically, there have been additions to speculative locations, such as Bird Key, based on new evidence. Additionally, some speculative areas across the map have been updated. That wraps up the analysis of the latest version of the GTA 6 mapping project. It'll be intriguing to see how closely it aligns with the actual map. Moreover, let's delve into a fascinating comparison between this latest version and all the other maps in the GTA series. Take a look at this comparison. On the left side, you'll find the latest version of the GTA 6 mapping project. Above it, there's the map of North Yankton from GTA 5. To the right of the North Yankton map, you'll see the island of Copico from GTA Online. Next to Copico, there's the GTA 5 map. Below that, we have the GTA 4 map. Below the GTA 4 map are the maps of Liberty City and GTA 3. And finally, at the bottom, there's the map of GTA San Andreas. One of the first things I noticed is how compact the GTA 4 map appears compared to others. Despite its small size, it boasted greater density than the GTA V map. Streets were closely packed, 
and every inch of space was utilized efficiently. Anyone who's played GTA 4 can attest to the unparalleled density of its city, brimming with intricate details. I anticipate a similar level of density and attention to detail in the GTA 6 map. Considering the vastness of the GTA 4 map, despite its modest size, I expect the density in GTA 6 to match, if not surpass, that level. Even though GTA 6 is already approximately twice the size of the GTA 5 map, the addition of intricate details will make it feel even more expansive. Now, let's examine a comparison between the old GTA Vice City map and the latest version of the GTA 6 mapping project. The old Vice City map has been superimposed onto the new one, allowing for a visual comparison of the two. What caught my attention was the size of the GTA Vice City map, which is quite substantial. However, in GTA 6, improvements are expected across the board. There will be more buildings, positioned closer together, enhancing the overall design and creating a denser environment. I also wanted to discuss a map that's been generating a lot of buzz within the community. Someone utilized images from Google Maps to supplement the mapping project. This method offers a clearer perspective on how the game's environment might appear in terms of scale and layout. While this representation may exaggerate the city's size with an abundance of buildings, it provides insights into the length and layout of highways, which have been overlaid with speculative areas. Additionally, looking at Yorktown, despite the lack of details, its size hints at the potential scale of both Yorktown and Port Gorn. Furthermore, the top portion of the map may resemble the depiction, although details remain uncertain. Considering the vast array of features such as multiple airports, cities, small towns, mountains, hills and swamps, it's evident that GTA 6's map is poised to be the most impressive in the series. The GTA 6 community has just found some major clues left by Rockstar Games, and it was under our nose the whole time. GTA 6's Trailer 1 revealed a ton of new things about the game off the bat, but recently, there's been even more developments that show off the GTA 6 main character story, Lucia. We learn a bunch of new things about her background, so if you're not interested in potential spoilers, this may not be the video for you. This information is directly from Rockstar Games, so this is the real deal. So getting into the details of Lucia's jail cell, let's focus on those newspaper clippings. I'll do my best to zoom in and enhance the image, but there are two distinct white clippings with black text. One of them appears to have a portrait, and I can only speculate that it might resemble a modern-day wanted poster. This could be showcasing the story of Lucia's alleged crime, accompanied by an image like a visual representation of what she's accused of. It's almost akin to a wanted picture that you'd find in a newspaper. This phenomenon isn't unheard of in real life. When people do something noteworthy or newsworthy, it's not uncommon for them to keep a record of it, like an article, and put it up on their wall as a sort of memento. It's like a snapshot of a moment in their life, even if it involves legal trouble. So Lucia might be preserving this particular newspaper clipping as a piece of her history, whether it's for sentimental reasons or perhaps as a reminder of the circumstances that led to her incarceration. Now let's broaden the scope a bit and draw comparisons to previous GTA protagonists. Take Michael DeSanta, for instance. His mansion has family photos on the walls. Franklin Clinton's house features similar personal touches. Even Trevor Phillips, in his trailer, has pictures that tell a story about his life. It's not just confined to the HD era. Even in the 3D era games, characters had their own way of leaving traces of their lives in their living spaces. This inclination to personalize living spaces is fascinating. In Lucia's case, the jail cell is an unexpected canvas for her personal story. It makes you wonder about her background, the choices she made, and the events that led her to that cell. Exploring these details could give us a deeper understanding of who she is and why she's in the predicament we find her in. Considering Lucia's attachment to those newspaper clippings, it raises interesting questions about her attitude towards her crimes. Perhaps she finds a sense of pride or even enjoys the bit of notoriety or fame she's garnered from her actions. Keeping those clippings might be her way of cherishing the attention or recognition she's received. The prospect of spending a substantial amount of time in prison also suggests that it could involve more than just a brief cutscene, but potentially a series of missions within the jail environment. Now, shifting our attention to the picture above the bunk bed, it's a bit of a visual puzzle. While it's challenging to discern details, on the left side, there's a guy with a drink in hand, donning a white t-shirt. Next to him is a woman with voluminous hair, and in the foreground, there's another figure. This composition raises the question of whether these individuals could be Lucia's family. The dynamics and connections between characters are often crucial in unraveling the narrative of any GTA game. Acknowledging my limited knowledge about jail life, it's uncertain whether inmates generally have the privilege of keeping photographs with them as mementos. However, 
In this specific scenario, it appears that Lucia can. This might imply that the prison depicted isn't a maximum security facility, given the freedom for inmates to keep personal items. While the setting is far from casual, it offers a level of interaction and mobility, allowing inmates to go outside, engage in conversations, sit at tables, and soak in sunlight. The orange jumpsuits signify their status, but the absence of being handcuffed to the ground suggests a certain level of relative freedom. In this context, the allowance of pictures and photographs could offer an additional layer of insight into the characters and their personal connections, providing players with a unique perspective on Lucia's life, both inside and outside the jail cell. Taking a closer look at the latest image, which I've adjusted to bring out more details, there's another intriguing photograph. A guy in an orange shirt catches the eye, positioned alongside two women on the right. The one on the left appears to be sporting a hat and sunglasses, although discerning whether any of them is Lucia remains challenging. They could very well be family members, close friends, or simply individuals from her social circle. Amidst all the uncertainty, Lucia seems notably fixated on reflecting upon her actions and the community's response. Beyond this, it's evident that Lucia maintains a distinct connection with a specific group of people, as indicated by the presence of their pictures in her jail cell. It's not just about her individual experience. There's a shared history captured in those photographs, hinting at relationships that go beyond the confines of the jail cell. Directly below the image featuring the guy in the orange shirt and the other girls, there's yet another photograph. Although the details are obscured, the presence of someone standing in the picture is noticeable. Lucia is seemingly constructing a collage of photos, creating a visual narrative that serves as a repository of memories. These images might play a crucial role in not only grounding her within the context of her relationships, but also providing a semblance of continuity and connection to the outside world. It's worth mentioning that the footage I'm working with is the highest quality version sourced from YouTube, as Rockstar hasn't officially released it on their Newswire page. Despite being in 4K, the YouTube upload might introduce some compromises in image quality, so there could be nuances in the pictures that we might miss. Once Rockstar throws the official trailer our way, we're likely to get a treasure trove of additional details. But for now, let's roll up our sleeves and dissect the snapshots from Lucia's jail cell. Apart from Jason, there's another player in Lucia's story. Stephanie, the Leonid Department of Corrections representative. Picture a different scene though. Lucia's cell is a far cry from Stephanie's office. In this particular shot, Stephanie's unmistakably holding down the fort in a black dress, center stage on the right. Flip to the left frame, and there she is again, donning a red dress on the right side. Behind her, there's a framed message teasing with, if you miss, but the rest remains a mystery due to some pesky screen glare. Now, let's make a full turn and voila, another Stephanie pick in the bottom right corner. This time, the backdrop suggests a domestic scene, perhaps with a partner. She's got on some bluish shades, slightly different from what we catch a glimpse of later. The background paints a more vivid picture, a collection of books, pamphlets, a conspicuous high visibility vest, and yet another potential newspaper clipping. Whether it's a routine thing or an anomaly, the jury's still out. So, what's the inside scoop on Lucia's backstory gleaned from her jail cell environment? Well, the state of the jail suggests it's seen better days. Peeling bits off the windows, hint at a place with some history. That initial shot with the barbed wire strongly implies it's not a newly minted spot. It's got the wear and tear of time etched into its surroundings. As we immerse ourselves in the intricacies of Lucia's life within the jail cell, the narrative unfolds as a captivating tapestry, each element contributing to the rich story. The subtleties, from the cryptic newspaper clippings, shedding light on her alleged crimes to the carefully chosen photographs, depicting relationships with family and friends, create a vivid and compelling portrait of Lucia's existence, both within and beyond the jail confines. The personal touches within her confined space evoke a rawness that harks back to the legacy of previous GTA protagonists. Lucia's jail cell, unexpectedly, becomes a canvas revealing a story that transcends the conventional GTA narrative. It prompts curiosity about her past, the decisions that led her to incarceration, and the intricate web of relationships that define her. The permission granted for personal items like photographs in the jail cell adds an intriguing layer to the storytelling, suggesting a nuanced sense of freedom within the constraints of imprisonment. Lucia's attachment to these items, whether they be newspaper clippings or family snapshots, beckons players to ponder her perspective on her own actions and the recognition she may have garnered. While we eagerly await the official trailer release from Rockstar, it is clear that Lucia's story is woven with complexities and mysteries that leave us yearning for more. 
The weathered appearance of the jail environment, with peeling bits off the windows and subtle signs of aging, hints at a setting steeped in history, amplifying the anticipation for the unfolding narrative. Thus, with these glimpses into Lucia's world, we find ourselves surrounded by a plethora of unanswered questions. When did she find herself behind bars, and what duration does her stay entail? Your insights are eagerly awaited in the comment section. If this exploration into Lucia's jail cell has piqued your interest, a thumbs up would be much appreciated. Comment down below what you believe caused Lucia to go to jail. And did you spot these hidden Easter eggs in the trailer on your first watch? I'm interested to hear back from you guys. Thank you for watching. If you would like to support our analysis content on GTA 6, make sure to subscribe and leave a like.